it's 80. Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. In this video, we're going to answer the question, what has changed? The question we receive from time to time is what has changed? And what they're asking is, what is different today than say five years ago? Well, a lot has changed, but it really depends on the vehicle or the project. So for this video, we're going to look at this 1976 Datsun 280Z that was converted back in 2018, basically five years ago. So we'll look at what was used in 2018 versus what we've used today on the same vehicle. So let's, let's get into it. components. Those are the ones we're going to compare. So the motor, the controller, the battery cells, the charger, and the DC to DC converter. Those are your five main components in an electric vehicle or a conversion. And so in 2018, uh, and this is true not only this the 280Z, but the 240 to 260 and 280Zs, all use the same package. And in 2018, we used the high performance electric vehicle systems AC 35 times 2. And you might ask, why that particular motor? Well, the reason is that, um, well, there's several reasons. And, and basically, the ev for you mantra is safe, simple, reliable, and affordable. So it came down to weight, size, performance, and cost, as well as simplicity. Simplicity is reliability. And so high performance electric vehicle systems AC 30 five times two is kind of a Siamese motor. You have uh, two armatures on a common shaft and you have two statters in a common housing. And what you end up with is a <clears throat> nine inch diameter by 20 inch long, 150 pound motor that will crank out 165 horsepower and 189 pound feet of torque at 4,800 RPMs. So you get the torque from zero, but at 4,800 RPMs, you have 165 horsepower. And so, um, you know, that's all well and good, right? Well, there's a little more to the, to the picture. We want a vehicle to be comparable when we convert it to the original internal combustion setup. And I... Pretty much without exception, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but 
we usually exceed the um, the statistics for the um, you know internal combustion. In this case, the stock 280Z puts out 149 horsepower at 5,600 RPMs and 163 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPMs. So you can see we're getting, you know, at lower RPM we're getting more horsepower and we have more torque because we have this at zero. They don't build that torque till 4,400 RPMs. And so it was a nice match. You know, we don't want to go too crazy, although people can, but we're building a car that's basically just an electric version of the vehicle. And a lot of these uh, 280Zs, uh, this is a 1976, and it's a California car. And in California, 1976 and newer vehicles uh, are required to meet emission standards. And the 280s are kind of a hit and miss. And so, especially when we're talking about a car that's, you know, almost 50 years old. <laughs> but that is a motivator for a lot of people to say, hey, I like my car and I want to keep it uh, uh, on the road. And this is a way that they can do that. So, High performance electric vehicle systems AC 35 times 2. We still use it. Okay, that's still the one that we recommend. You can look at, you know, other ways of doing it. Uh, you could put a Nissan Leaf motor in there. You could uh, use the um, NetGain uh, Hyper 9 HV, which would run the same voltage as we're running with this one. The difference is. Uh, you know, the size and the weight, none of these others really fit the picture and stay with that simplicity, the affordability, so forth. So, 2023, same. The Curtis 1239E8521, I believe it is, controller. It uses dual controllers, and so um, and these are 500 amps each, so it's a thousand amps. Um, still use those, although I must say they're getting hard to come by. So I don't know if they're going to be replaced with something else in the future or not. Um, we're going to leave the cells for last year. Let's skip on down to the Elcon charger. Back in 2018, we were using for this size of battery pack that's in this vehicle. Um, and it features 48 of the Cal uh, CA series 180 amp hour cells. Uh, basically, a uh, 28.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. And, um, and this is what we were using at the time. Last uh, two, three years, we're using a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. And so basically, we're, you'll see we're using a, a, a little bit larger pack. So the charge times really haven't changed. They've stayed about the same. Uh, the DC to DC converter, we used to use a 400 watt one on these, a lot of vehicles back then. This car doesn't have a lot of electronics on it or anything, so this was uh, more than enough. But now we use a 1000 watt DC to DC converter. So, little changes there, nothing huge. Of course, the prices have gone up a little bit. Um, on everything. Now, let's talk about the battery pack and the, the cells. We have been uh, using CALP cells for a long time. They are, uh, I mean, they just have, you know, uh, 
shown the test of time. Number one thing was I like the lithium iron phosphate uh, chemistry. Uh, over the years, I probably wasn't real popular. A lot of people use the Tesla Model S modules. Um, it's interesting, though, that in 2022, most of the vehicles that Tesla sold featured lithium iron phosphate chemistry cells. And you'll see that a lot of the industry will start going that way. It's not the most energy dense, but it's by far the safest, has the largest number of life cycles, and you don't have nickel and cobalt. So um, what the future will bring, you know, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, lithium iron phosphate is what we're going to use until they come up with something that's better. So anyway, but what's changed from 2018 to 2023 is they discontinued the CA series uh, cells and the 180 amp hour cell that we used on so many of our projects is, you know, that's, that's now phased out. What's replaced it is a 230 amp hour cell. Now, where this gets to be a real plus is that the 230 amp hour cell is smaller in size, so volumetrically it's smaller than the 180, and it weighs three pounds less per cell. That's huge. 50 amp hours more capacity and three pounds lighter and smaller in size. Win, 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 okay? And so we're gonna look at the big picture here. Let me switch sides here. So the Cal 180s, they were 12 and a half pounds a piece. There's 48 cells in this conversion. So that was 600 pounds and 28,512 watt hours. The newer cells, like I said, they're smaller, so you're gonna have a little extra room, um, but not huge as far as the, you know, the big picture when you do a conversion with, you know, you're gonna have a little more room around things, but it's not gonna be, look like a, a huge difference. Um, but here's the huge difference, 9.5 pounds. So now the pack is only 456 pounds. That's, we're losing 144 pounds. So that's pretty good. And our capacity goes up to 36,432 watt hours. So that's a gain of 7,920 watt hours. So lose weight, gain capacity. Bottom line is we had an increase of 23 miles. So the conversion that was done in 2018 compared to the conversion in 2023 bottom line for most people is that you're going to gain 23 miles in range. But there's something else that you gain. When you lose the weight, this isn't huge, but it's enough that you will notice. Um, and so now the car is going to be a little, you know, a little more agile, a little more sprite. And uh, so your, your, your stopping distance will decrease a little bit. Your acceleration will increase a little bit, and your overall performance will increase a little bit. So that's kind of the, um, the big picture of you know, the five main components on the 280Z conversion, comparing 2018 with 2023. And, you know, it, it's, it's like everything else, it's going to cost a little bit more in 2023, but um, you're getting something for the extra cost, so that part's nice. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, appreciate it if you like and subscribe, and hope to see you in the next one.